Hi from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning La, La Land. I'm so excited to welcome recording artist M. Hoggett to the show. How are Thank you, gorgeous? You. I'm great. Thank you. Know, you I've been following your black and white journey on Instagram for a moment now. <laughs> and I love that you just came to represent. What does your pin say? It says clothing optional, consent required. And it's um, it's from a charity only with consent, which is one of the charities I'm donating the proceeds of my EP to. Mm. And, and what, what is your new EP? My new EP is What I Want to Say to You. And it's um, the whole EP is about my experience with sexual assault, well, rape specifically. So it's a very heavy topic, but I think seriously, seriously important. Um, I think it's something that hasn't been done, at least in wide scale media before. I've never seen an album out there about a topic like this. Um, and I think people need to hear it. I think it's really important. So what do you want to say? I want to say a lot of things, mm -hmm. lots of things. Every song, this is a four track EP and every song is about a different emotion that I experienced in my journey um, from when I wrote the first song until now, basically. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot I want to say, but I would say listen to the EP to hear all the well, you, even just looking at the the title of the tracks, you know, one of them was anger. Right. W what are the other titles? Yeah. So anger. Um, the story of the EP kind of came about. So I I was raped when I was sixteen in London, which is where I'm from, and um, I didn't tell anyone about it for a really long time. It was all, you know, buried, and that's how it was. And then I moved to New York when I was eighteen to go to drama school because I'm also an actress, and. When I got there, I had the most amazing time and everything was like, I just kind of, it left me for a bit, you know? And then I went home that Christmas and everything was just like, <sighs> and so I expected it to go away when I got back to New York and it didn't. I got back there and it was just taking over my life. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't work, mm. I literally couldn't do anything. It was just all I could think about all the time. So I called my mom and I was like, what do I do, what do I do? And she said, well, you should try writing a letter to your attacker, she said that helps a lot of people, she says you don't have to send it, but just to get all those feelings out. So naturally for me that came in writing a song, so that's what I did. So in literally in about 10 minutes I wrote the opening track which is called What I Want to Say to You. And it still didn't really feel like enough, so then a couple of weeks later I released it, had an amazing response and that was huge for me because that was me basically telling all my friends and family, hi this is what's mm. happened to me, yeah. which was really essential for me because I think what a lot of people struggle with, what I really suffered with was denial. And just, it was so easy for me to just say to myself, this isn't, this hasn't happened, this hasn't happened to me because nobody knew it had happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I did and, and I'm so happy I did it. And that's one of the main things I want to say is to, that's one of the biggest reasons for the EP is I'm trying to inspire other survivors to speak right. out because it literally changed my life. It's so interesting. I was actually uh, working someplace yesterday and this gentleman started gabbing with me and, and he said, what do you think about you know these women that come out 15 years later and and talk about stuff? Don't you think it's a little inappropriate? They should have said it right away. And I'm like thinking, wow, no comment. Yeah, just no comment. It's it's, yeah. it's actually amazing how our society finds a way to always turn it around on the woman mm -hmm. or or the obviously mm -hmm. men are victims to this as well. But it's it's amazing how it they always find a way to put it back on us. Mm -hmm. And it's or some would say you know you're dressed like that. Maybe you deserve it. And I'm exactly. thinking, wow, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and to answer your earlier question, so Anger was the second song I wrote, and that was kind of after I um, I really started to accept what happened, and then I just got really angry, as you would. And that song is a very, um, it's quite a violent song, and something I normally wouldn't want to be like, here's my music but I thought it was so important to put it on the EP because that is such a natural emotion and it's an emotion that I want to say to other survivors, this is totally normal to feel. Don't feel ashamed of this, you're not alone in this and don't try and hide this because if you're just bottling all that anger inside you, it's gonna eat you alive, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the third song is Will It Always Be Like This, which I wrote shortly after and that was just about the feeling, is this, am I just gonna be depressed for the rest of my life? And then I was pretty good and then I moved over to LA, I graduated in New York, everything was good for a while. And then the Harvey Weinstein stuff came about and everything was just triggering. Social media was mad at that time. And that's when I wrote the fourth and final song, Get Out, which is about um, trying to get that, the fact that that person and that experience literally feels like they live inside your body always and really just trying to get that out. So that's, yeah. How did you get that out? How did you cut that cord? Well, I don't think, I 
haven't, I wouldn't say I've cut it, yeah. Um, it's definitely frayed. But I think for me, really the songs and releasing this, I think expression is so important. And that's that's why it's another huge thing I'm trying to do with this EP, is just really try and get people to do that. I don't have to share it, but just to get, even just me writing that first song, getting it out on a page, right. is so helpful. So a lot of times in trauma work or things like that, we, we you know, forgiveness is so important. That doesn't mean we don't hold people accountable. That doesn't mean whatever, but forgiving because whatever happened in the past, we're still replaying that and we're bringing the harm essentially back to ourselves just through re-energizing those mental pictures of what happened during that time. How are you finding forgiveness beyond your music, beyond whatever? Is there anything you've done, any modalities, any things that you recommend for people? Yeah, um, it's really interesting that you say that because I definitely agree. I think um, that however we allow anyone else to make make us feel is just giving them our power because we really have all the powers of how we feel and what we do and so just in terms of my personal um well-being i mean yeah really like meditation journaling positive affirmations um all the stuff everyone was saying about this morning you know really and to and to basically just turn that to turn everything inwards to think that i need to be I need to love myself, really. And the, if I focus on my, if every time I think of him or I think of that, if I just think, why am I, why am I feeling like this because of you? I should be feeling great because of me, you know? So then it's just about finding the good things in my life and trying to focus on the positives. And I think forgiveness in a situation like rape is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. um, it's something, yeah, I'm not sure where well, I'm at with that yet. But I, I think there's something to be said about forgiving yourself for the way you feel forgiving yourself for the anger, for the shame, and in creating that almost an, of an acceptance, rather, and yes. the ability then to, to let go. Definitely. I think acceptance is key, and I think forgiving yourself, because I think a lot of people with traumatic situations end up doing things they might not necessarily want to do, or blah, 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 and I think forgiving yourself for maybe hurting yourself, harming yourself mm -hmm. through any means, whatever that might be, but I think we all can get self-destructive, and exactly as you said, forgiving yourself for that behavior, and then turning it around to love, I think is really important. Love that. In addition to your mom, who sounds incredibly insightful, yeah. <laughs> um, have there been any teachers or authors or mentors um, that have sort of helped you process and move through? Uh, this experience? Definitely. I have a life coach um, here in LA. She's incredible and she's all, it's quite spiritually based, and it, but it's all um, the work of kind of Eckhart Tolle and um, as we were just talking about, Byron Katie. Um, so all of that kind of work and just just the power of the mind really and, the, and recognizing that we have control of our thoughts and that when a thought comes into my head that doesn't mean that it's true. And for me to say, not so say if I mm. thought right now, oh I feel really sad, well, that's a bit different, but if I said, oh, I, I look really fat right now, say that's my thought. And for me to not say, oh, I do look really fat, but to say, no, I'm noticing the thought that I feel really fat. Is that true? And then to go through Byron Katie's work we were just discussing, yeah. fantastic author, and, and figuring out, are these thoughts actually true? And most of the time, they're not. They're just limiting beliefs that have been fed to us since a very young age. I just mm -hmm. love that. And I couldn't agree more. I, I feel strongly that every stressful thought is a lie. Yeah. And then and there's a level beyond that, which is that every single thought is a lie. It's mm -hmm. simply a small representation of what actually happened. No single thought can capture the entire truth of an experience or the entire truth of who you are. Right. right? So I just love, and I love that you were sort of working with this coach and that you're sort of working through it. Mm -hmm. um, so inspired by you and your strength and your yeah. resilience. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for all your work. Can't wait to hear all of it and excited for the journey for all of it. Tell people where they can listen to your new EP. Everywhere. Um, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, uh, Google Play, and everything, all the net proceeds of the CP 100% are being donated to sexual assault charities. Wow. So I'm not making any money, producers making, it's all for charity, um, trying to help other survivors. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Stay tuned. Boss. We'll be back with the morning live. <laughs>